Chaitanya na tasmai shri gurave namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Dejatarine Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to the study of the nectar of instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. So in the last class unfortunately we were disrupted we were not able to complete everything with the technical problem with the network but what I, I think I think I think we covered the main parts of the text I I would like to just look over the questions which are here which are required you know the the questions on the text three examples of anger utilized in the Lord's service Does some, someone remember the three examples Pushpanjali Pushpanjali Mataji do you remember do you remember the three examples of use of anger in the service of Krishna uh, yeah every day we think that uh, I have worked hard that is like uh, Atmaha that I should work at no, you've not understood my question. Three examples of people using anger in the service of Krishna. Yeah, that is not, not advisable. No, that you, I'm asking you three examples. Example. They're given in the text. This is based on the text. In the text, Prabhupada gives three examples of people who used anger in the service of Lord Krishna. Yes, someone else? Yes? Yes? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu getting angry on Jagai and Matai one, and then Hanuman getting angry and setting fire to Lanka. Number three, Arjuna getting angry and fighting. Yes. After. Thank you. Lord, encourage you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so kindly note that, everyone. Then number six, why does the Krishna consciousness movement encourage marriage? Hey Krishna Maharaj, for begetting Krishna conscious children. Yes, we need, we need many Krishna conscious children for our Krishna conscious movement. The children are the future devotees, so it's very important to produce good quality children. Thank you. Number seven, why should one avoid palatable dishes even while eating prasadam? Even while eating, even while eating prasadam we have to avoid palatable dishes. What's the reason? Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna, Dandabad Pranams. Uttam Krishna Dash, uh, it was my very, very bad fortune, or I was not realized last Friday class, so I could not attend. Can you answer the question? Yes, uh, Mahaprabhu said, Haluna Puribe, Haluna Khaibe. That means one could not eat very palatable food, and one should not wear a very fancy or very gorgeous dress and not to live very high standard up means material high standard life it will make us attached with more into entangled with maya and keep away from krishna 
Well, that instruction was given to Raghunath Das Goswami in the renounced yeah. order of life. I don't think yes. I don't think that instruction applies to everyone. Well, that's of course is applicable because Raghunath Goswami he was from for a very filthy rich family. So Mahaprabhu that time they said no, you should not eat to uh, under. Till you will have that mentality, that means you will be more entangled to enjoy your sense gratification in another way. Someone else like to answer the question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, is to control the tongue. Yes, if, 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 if the, the problem is if we try to enjoy the opulent food stuff, we will eat more than necessary. And when we eat more, overeating, that's a cause of fall down. And the senses will be, put more weight on the belly. And then uh, that way the senses, the, the urges of the body become disturbed. And so we have to be careful not to overeat. If you eat opulent food stuff, we want to eat more than necessary. And then the senses will be disturbed. We won't be able to control the senses. All right, and then define Godas. Servant of senses. Yeah, servant of the senses. Okay, very good. So we'll look at the objectives which we're supposed to cover here in this text. Uh, Explain the meaning of the terms Upadesha Amrita, Subramaya Vrajeshtas. Do you know the meaning, Upadesh? Instruction, uh, Maharaj. Yes, thank you. Upadesha Amrita means nectar of instructions. Nectar of instructions. All right. And Rupanuga means? Who follows the path and instructions of uh, Rupa Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami. Right. And Goswami means? Is the master of senses, Maharaj. And Prayaschitta? Is, um, um, uh, uh, it is, um, kind of, um, Atonement. Atonement. Yes, atonement, right. Can you give some example of atonement? Uh, people uh, uh, undertaking Mauna Vrita, people undertaking this kind of uh, uh, some, some or other uh, uh, they, the usual practice they will be avoiding, uh, like uh, they just go on certain fasting on certain days and uh, of the week and certain um, uh, TV or something, something like that. Those are the kind of things people think that it is the right price, Chitta, but which is not. Okay, thank you. And so, we'll go on and then uh, explain the meaning of the key terms of text number one. The key term, particularly Vega. The Vega means what? Urge. The urges, right, the urge. And we have how many urges? Three urges. <laughs> really? Six marriage. Yeah, I think so. Six. Six urges, right. What is the qualification of a guru to make disciples all over the world? What's his qual what should be the qualification? Someone? We'll ask somebody else. Maybe Su Subramai Harini. Hare Krishna Yes. Huh. Uh, for the, uh, the qualification of Guru is he should be uh, he should be a, a, a control, con, one should already control his six urges and one should be fully in Krishna conscious and the practitioner of the Krishna conscious. Yes, he should be able, he should control the six urges, right, that's right, good. You should be in control of the mind and senses, right? Yes. Hmm. 
All right, then we want to hear Maharaj, it. Yes. Maharaj, said here, Kiba Bipro Kiba Shudro Nushibare Noi, J. Krishna Tokta Betta She Guru Hai. It's regardless one is a Brahmana or he is a Chandala, if someone is fully Krishna consciousness, he can be a Guru. That is which is Lord Chaitanya's instruction or Lord Chaitanya's comment. All right, you've quoted that verse. What is Lord Chaitanya saying? What is the qualification of the Guru? That he has to be fully Krishna conscious. What does that mean, fully Krishna conscious? Means uh, his mind, senses, everything should be engaged or in the service of Krishna. No, and no. Whatever he is, he should talk based on based on Shadu and Shastra. Prabhupada doesn't translate that verse like that. He, Prabhupada explains it. It means he knows the science of Krishna. He knows the yes. science of Krishna. Krishna tattva. But he doesn't just say Krishna conscious, he said he knows the science of Krishna. He has to know the science of Krishna, he has to know the philosophy. Correct. Right? Oh, okay, all right, thank you. We want to go on. Very well. But now it's mentioned here, six urges, text number one. Inappropriate means, now there's the appropriate Krishna conscious means, there's also the inappropriate means to control the urges. Just like the urge to speak, how could, you know, what is the inappropriate method of controlling the urge to speak? Somebody who would like to ask? Speaking only Krishna Kata, talking about Krishna's name. All right, but what's, what's the inappropriate method of controlling the urge to speak? Um, being maun and silent marriage. Right, monavrat, right. That's inappropriate, right. Okay, there's, what about the, 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 the inappropriate means of controlling the urge to eat? Eat, um, fasting? Is that inappropriate? I want to know inappropriate. Fasting, fasting, yeah, fasting on holy days is good, but but just yes. just fasting without any reason, then that's inappropriate, right? Uh, yes. yes so the, in everything, the different urges. There's the appropriate method and the inappropriate method. How can we control the tongue? Control the, um, taking only prasadam, Krishna prasadam. Right. And also fasting on holy days. Holy days, yes. Uh, you fast on the holy day like Ekadasi, Janmastami. So this is, an, we had the Bhishma Panchak. Many devotees, they like to do that Bhishma Panchak. They do some fasting there. So that is controlling the tongue. Hmm? Yes, Maharaj. And so, similarly, yeah, uh, what about anger? What, what, what would be the inappropriate way of controlling anger? Inappropriate, um, just, just showing anger on others and yeah, you're right. Maybe just releasing the anger and on, maybe they go and kick the dog. <laughs> they kick the dog or they hit their head, beat their head on the wall in their frustration. Right? Sorry? For selfish interest, Kuroda for selfish interest, self interest. I'm not, not able... for the not for the Krishna consciousness related work. I'm not. It's not clear. I couldn't hear what you're saying. Kuroda done for the self interest, in personal interest, not for the in service of Krishna consciousness improvement. Something to do good for the Krishna. That is the appropriate attitude, but something which is done for the self-appraisal, uh, or to show off the self. Okay. That is 
All right. Yes. All right. So now your essay question, which you have to write for this nectar of instruction, one essay will be on this first verse. Right? If you look at the essay questions, open book assessment. Discuss the importance of controlling the six urges as described in Sri Upadesham Rita, text 1. What practical steps are you taking to control these six urges? Give appropriate references to Upadesham Rita, text 1, verse and purport in your response. Right? Some people want to control their sex desire, so some people want, they may, they may think, I have to cut off my genitals. You know, that, that would be inappropriate. In some places they would do like that. There was, like in China, the emperor would have many wives. So the, all the men who were there in the palace, they were all eunuchs. In other words, they were, you know, they were castrated so that they could not harm any of the king's wives. And they would do things like that. So that's very inappropriate. But the appropriate way is to produce God-conscious children. Get married, of course, and have God-conscious children. All right, are there any other questions on text number one? Well, I'm sorry if you can give little glimpse. Unfortunately, last Friday I could not, I was not aware of the class. The class is recorded. You get the recording and you listen to the recording. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, only we have to take the Krishna Prasadam. What about that, like uh, demigod Prasadam, like uh, different demigod uh, temples are there? We can take the Prasadam there or no? No, we don't take demigod Prasadam. Okay. We take demigod Prasadam if it's Maha Prasadam from Vishnu, which has been offered to Vishnu first and then offered to demigod. Then you can take it. But we don't take okay. what's offered directly to the devas. No. We don't take that. That's not acceptable to the devotees. We, take we only take Krishna Prasada. So you go to the deva temple, you have to be careful. They may not like it. What can you do? We have our standards. That's the standard. You see, the, the, they used to have, the prasadam from Lord Jagannath used to be brought to the big temple in Bubit, in, outside Puri, and there's a big temple there of, of Shiva, I think, or Durga, and they used to offer it there. But they, then they stopped doing it. They don't do it anymore. So, no, Prabhupada didn't want us to take the prasadam of the demigods, because Everything should be offered to Krishna. And if you take the prasadam of the demigods, it means you think the demigods are on the same level as Krishna. That's, a pro that's why we don't take it, because it's not all one. Hare Krishna. Krishna Maharaj. Huh? Maharaj, any Vishnu Tattva? Is considered equivalent to Krishna Prasadam, right? Yes. Thank you. And even if we go to Ramanujas like that, you can take Prasad there. They're Vaishnavas. You can take Ramanuj Prasadam, you could take Madhva Prasadam or Nimbarka. They're, they're bona fide sampradayas. But we don't take from the Devas because they think. The, the devas are on the same level as Krishna.
Yes, any other questions? Maharaj Dandar Pranam. Maharaj, uh, Boga offered to Lord Shiva can be taken? Boga offered to Lord Shiva? Yes. No. No. I just said we don't take prasadam from the, dem the demigods. Thank you, Maharaj. Because they are all thinking Shiva is the supreme. Krishna is not the su supreme. They are thinking Shiva is the supreme. I showed them our book. I was I was traveling, distributing books in t different places in South India, and we would go to big demigod temples. And I show them our pictures in the book. And there's one picture, you know, Lord Shiva's meditating, and Lord Krishna is up above Lord Shiva. It shows Lord Shiva meditating on Krishna. And they said to me. This picture is wrong. It should be the other way. It should be the other way around. Krishna meditates on Shiva, <laughs> and they did not like. They did not accept our pictures. They said Shiva is the supreme. Okay. Any other questions? No other questions? So we can go on. Can you take this text off? Can you take this text off? I don't want text number two. I'm going to use PowerPoint. Take this text down. Okay, Maharaj. Right, we're going to have PowerPoint. I'll share the screen. Can, can, can you make me co-host? Who's the host? Yeah, Maharaj. You are already co-host, Maharaj. I'm co-host, okay. So I'm going to share the screen, right? And I've got a PowerPoint for this. Can you see it? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. You're all seeing the PowerPoint? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Because we're going to go through this. We want to, I don't want to take too long because I know you've got a lot of things to do. Uh, so let me see. My goodness, one second. All right. Lesson number two, unfavorable, six unfavorable and six favorable. We're going to cover these texts two and three. They go together, the two texts. First of all, lesson one, right? We give an overview of the Upadesham Rita, covering, beginning with the Vaidhi Bhakti, according to rules and regulations, and then coming up to Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti, right? Then Rupa Goswami in the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami, had, why was he important? Anybody remember? Anybody? Can I see? Do you remember? Anybody remember why Rupa Goswami was important in the mission of Lord Chaitanya? Because uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Uh, because uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, given him authority to write the books. Right, he empowered him. Right, he empowered him to write the books. Yeah, just like Krishna gave the Vedas to Brahma, Lord Chaitanya empowered Rupa Goswami. And then we explain, Krishna Consciousness Movement is conducted under Rupa Goswami. 
We are following. We heard Rupanuga. We are fo Rupanugas. We are following him. But the movement is under him because he was taught by Lord Chaitanya how to how to explain Krishna consciousness. The purpose of Upadeshamrita to make us all good devotees. Pure devotees. Yeah, pure devotees or Goswamis even, right? And to develop love for Krishna and to help us improve our attitude in Krishna consciousness. Our attitude that we want to surrender to Krishna, we want to take shelter of Krishna, we want to love Krishna. And then we've been speaking about the appropriate means to control the urges. All right? So this verse, this is a memorization verse. Everybody has to remember this verse. Here's a nice quote. This is from a person called Radha Raman Goswami from Vrindavan. He wrote a commentary also on Upadesha Amrita. What, what's going on? What's that noise? So, in the beginning stage, in the beginning stage of the practice of bhakti, the material proclivity is prominent in the hearts of the sadhakas. Therefore, they are unable to subdue the six overwhelming passions described in the first verse. Consequently, in this condition, many tendencies that are very harmful to bhakti develop in the hearts of the sadhakas. In this verse, those injurious tendencies are being described for the benefit of the sadhaka. Right? The, uh, this is the connection between verse 1 and verse number 2. Verse 1 was describing those urges. And if those urges are not controlled, then the result is we get these six unfavorable activities or attitudes and these six things are very harmful to our bhakti. So it's very important for us to control the urges. Right, here's the verse. Who would like to chant the verse? Yes, please chant. Yeah. They will make a pistas here, Maharaj. Atyahara Prajapasya. Atyahara Prayachascha. Prajalpo Niamagraha. Prajalpo Niamagraha. Jana Sangas Chalolamcha. Jana Sangas Chalolamcha. Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati. Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati. All right, first point, Adyahara means eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. So eating more than necessary. We should eat to keep the body and soul together. Don't eat too much, don't eat too little. You just eat what you need to eat. It's not the same for everyone. Some people they need to eat more, some people they need to eat, they can eat less. So, you know, it's every, every individual should know how much they need to eat and how much they don't need. Don't overeat, that's important. We eat for our own self. When we dress, we dress for others. We have to, we, can, we think about what other people will think. So when we dress, we're conscious about other people. But when we eat, it's for our own self. We should know what we need to eat, what you don't need to eat. Don't eat too much. Very bad for our devotional service. Eat too much means too much weight on the belly and you become lazy. 
and the senses become uncontrolled. And sometimes collecting too much money, that's also a problem. More funds than required. And then we become extravagant and wasteful. And so Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he didn't like temples to keep too much money. If they had money, he would come and spend it. He would make an exhibition of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And he would say, the, the devotees would complain, they say, Oh, Guru Maharaj, you're spending all the money. And he would say, Yes, you have to go out and preach now. <laughs> so if we have more funds, we become lazy. We don't want to work. We just sit around. So that's a danger. So therefore Rupa Goswami said, collecting more funds than required is a problem, can spoil our devotional service. Second one, over endeavouring for mundane things, very difficult to obtain, prayashash, over endeavouring. You know, people have many desires because we have, we're very greedy, we want more, we want to improve our economic condition. So what do they do? They, will, they work, they work long hours. One job is not enough. You get one job in the day, one job at night, another job on the weekend. Three jobs, right? Why? Because they, 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 because they want so much. They have to, they have to, they want all the luxury, they want to buy all the luxury items. So over endeavouring, is it necessary? No. Just like even devotees sometimes, we would over endeavour. We would want the devotee temple president, he would tell us, go out on Sankirtan. He'd say, you don't have to come back at night, just stay outside. Just stay outside, come back at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, but when Prabhupada heard that we were staying out till 10 o'clock at night, Prabhupada said, no. He said, devotees should come back, should have a program in the evening. You have a program in the morning, have a program in the evening. In the daytime you can go out. Prabhupada didn't want us to over-endeavour. Yeah? He wanted us to over-endeavour to become Krishna conscious, but not just only for making money and for, you know, expanding and building new buildings and things like that. And so, we have to be conscious, not, not over-endeavouring, trying too hard for something. And then prajalpa, number three, talking unnecessary about mundane subject matters. That's very, very bad. Why? Because when we talk, we'll talk about people and we will make offences and that's very, very bad. So idle talk, we start talking, we criticise people and we make offences. Very dangerous. So I have to be conscious of that. Number four, an important one, Niyam Agraha, practising the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scripture, working independently or whimsically. So two sides to it. Niyam means the rules and regulations and agraha and agraha. Different things. One is following the rules and regulations too strictly, too care, you know, too attached to the rules and regulations, and the other is not following them at all. <laughs> so you have to have a balance between the two things. So we'll discuss this in a little while. It's important to understand. Then Jana Sangha's association with materialistic people. Materialistic people means non-devotees, people who are not Krishna conscious, maybe Mayavadis, can be demigod worshippers, these kind of people. 
as well as atheists and so many things. And then Lo Yang, being greedy for mundane achievements. All right, so being greedy for mundane achievements. Sometimes we think we have to get recognition in the material world. We want people to recognize us. Hmm. Prabhupada didn't worry about it. Greedy for mundane achievements. We want people to know how great we are. It's all material, not good for our Krishna consciousness. Okay, so these are the six items from Prabhupada's purport. Someone can read? Mataji? Let's have a Mataji read. Arisha Maharaj? Yes. Is Deepa Priya you can? Okay. Uh, human life is meant for plain living and high thinking. In the material world, one has to work for the maintenance of the body and soul but how can one perform such work in a way that is favorable for the execution of Krishna Consciousness? Nectar of Instruction, text 2, page 15 and 17. All right. So Prabhupada often spoke about plain living and high thinking. Problem is people don't want it. They don't want to live plain. They want high living and simple thinking. They want the reverse. This is a problem. Of course, Prabhupada recognizes we have to work for the maintenance to get, we need money, so we have to work. But we should work in a way so that we can still be Krishna conscious. That's important. Okay, so text number three. Someone chant again? I wish to marriage. Utsahanishayadayad. <laughs> So, first of all, the first three, Utsahan, Nishjayat, Dariyat, enthusiasm, confidence and patience. Very important. Prabhupada says in every endeavour you need these things. We need to be enthusiastic, we need confidence, we need patience. Right? Enthusiasm. Uh, Prabhupada defines enthusiasm. Does anyone remember? How does Prabhupada define enthusiasm in the text? Did anybody notice the definition of enthusiasm? Does anybody know the definition for enthusiasm? Nobody know, eh? Prabhupada finds in the text, he said, endeavouring with intelligence in Krishna consciousness is enthusiasm. Endeavouring with intelligence in Krishna consciousness. And then he talks about confidence and patience. And he gives the example, Prabhupada gives the example about the young woman who just gets married and naturally she would like to have a child. So Prabhupada explains she has to be patient and she has to be confident that she's married and her husband, if she surrenders to the husband, the husband will give the child. But it will take some time, not that immediately she's married she gets the baby. So like this Prabhupada explains these three qualities, comfort, enthusiasm, confidence and patience. And then tat tat karma pravartanat means 
acting according to the regulative principles such as Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, hearing, chanting, remembering Krishna. Prabhupada explains, uh, in Krishna consciousness, there are two phases to the initiation, right? Did you notice that question? There's a question on this. If you look in the questions, which you all have to learn in order to do the closed book, right? Text number three. Text number three. Uh, describe the two aspects of tat tat karma pravartanat. Anybody know? Nobody prepared this yet. Two aspects of tat tat karma pravartanat. Prabhupada explains there's yama and niyama. Just like we have niyama graha. So, yama, niyama. Yama means prohibitions, the things we're not supposed to do, right? What is that? What do we not do? Hare Krishna? Four regulated principles. Yeah, of course. Yeah, four regulated principles. No meat, fish and egg, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. That's the yama. Yam. What's the niyam? What do you have to do? Follow the four regulated principles. No, we, we already explained that's what you, you know, that's the first part. That's the yama. What's the niyama? Chanting. Yes, chanting. What else do you have to do? Wake up early in the morning. Prasadam. Prasadam. Oh, prasadam. Oh, every, everybody likes prasadam. <laughs> <Yeah>. Association. <laughs> oh, association. Oh. No. What, what are we supposed to do? Chanting, worshipping Krishna, hearing about Krishna. Remembering Krishna. Reading. How do you remember? To, to remember you have to hear and you have to chant, yeah, right? The hearing and the chanting come first. The remember, if you do the hearing and the chanting, then the remembering will come. So hearing, chanting, worshipping Krishna, these things, yes. This is a ni, this is a niyama, right? Understand two phases of tatta karma pravartana, right? And then Sangha Chyaga, giving up what kind of association? Non-devotees association. Yeah, giving up the association. And who are the non-devotees? Mayavadis and the people who worship demigods. Yeah, all of these people. Many, there's many <laughs> non-devotees, right? <laughs> many different kinds. And then, and then Satovrite, meaning? Follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. All right? Follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. Mm -hmm. Chanting Hare Krishna, surrendering to Krishna. So, Shambhir Bhakti Prasijati. If you do these six things, then we will develop devotional service. All right? Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead. Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes, Bhaktivinoda Thakur also wrote a commentary on Upadeshamrita. So he explains about text number three. The first half of the verse, who remembers the first half of text number three? Marijis? First half of the verse number three? You're not Mataji. <laughs> well, that's not the first half. That's the whole verse. I want it. Yes. What are the, what's the meaning in English? Vichaya is with confidence, 
Kairiyat means with patient. So this Bhakti Vinod Thakur said these three things, this is the attitude that's favorable for cultivating bhakti, right? This is a proper attitude we should have. And then the second half, what's the second half of the verse? Tat tat karma pravartanat. And then? Yes, right. The second half describes how a devotee should conduct his life. Right? So the yes. first half is about the attitude, and the second half is how we should live our life. Now, I'm going to show you a diagram here. Right? You can see at the top. On the left side, we've got Bahiranga Shakti, and the right side, Antaranga Shakti. And in the middle, Tatasta. Right? What's the Bahiranga Shakti? External potency of the Lord. Where is that? Material nature. Yes, material world, right? Where's where's the Antaranga Shakti? Spiritual world, right? And we are there. We're the Tatasta Shakti, right? Mm. Prabhupada explains about Tatasta Shakti. Someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. We are spirit soul, but put into marginal because just like the margin is explained, Atastha, that is, we have translated into marginal. Just like we go on the Pacific beach, some day we find the water is covering the beach, and some day we see it is open. There is no water. So that is called marginal. Marginal. Sometimes it is covered by water, sometimes there is no water. Similarly, we being marginal potency, we are sometimes influenced by this material nature, not always. Because at the present moment, for some times, we are under the material nature. Now, if we try, then we can get out of this covering of material nature and come to the spiritual nature. With yes. Bhagavatam 1.15.3, Los Angeles, for 1970. Yeah, Prabhupada often would walk on the Pacific beach. Because Los Angeles, he would go walk on the beach. And so he gave this, gave this example here. Sometimes in the water, sometimes on the land. And so we are tatasta, sometimes in the material nature, sometimes spiritual. This is marginal. So on the bottom, the uncontrolled urges. What are these six urges? Uncontrolled? Who, who remembers? What are the urges? Six uncontrolled urges? Any... English, English. Control of speech, the mind, uh, anger, control of speech, mind and anger, uh, tongue, and belly and genitals. Yes, thank you. Right. So six uncontrolled urges. So what happens when they're uncontrolled? Then we develop these six unfavorable activities or attitudes. The unfavorable activities or attitudes, someone can remember in English, what are they? Without more reading, than, without reading, I want you to not remember. More eating more than necessary. Yes. Or collecting more funds than required. Over endeavoring to obtain things that are very difficult to obtain. Talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement. Or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or mixing Associating with worldly minded persons who are not uh, Krishna consciousness and being greedy for mundane achievements. 
Are you able to say this without looking at the book? Uh, uh, I try hard. Yeah, well, you have to it try. Is, Not now. It, it it's won't. okay, it's okay. But uh, in future, you have to learn. Okay. Right? Okay, so we put in some more here. Did you notice we added here on the life side? Raja and Tamagun, right? The Bahiranga Shakti, the, because uh, we've got the unfavorable activities and attitudes and the result is we develop Raja and Tamagun. And you see at the bottom, do you see that word on the bottom, left hand corner? Mm. What? Duratma. Yes, Dur Atma. Do you know the meaning? Duratma? Bare soul. Yeah, a crooked soul, right? Here we go, Prabhupada's quote. Someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Duratma. Yeah. From Nectar of Instruction, text 2, Papad, page 70. Such a mentally crippled Duratmas are put under the control of the Lord's external potency, Mahamaya, whose business is to subject them to the influence of the threefold miseries. Hare Krishna. Hmm. So mentally crippled Duratmas. Duratma meaning crooked soul or fallen soul. Threefold miseries described for us, right? Adi Atmika Klesha means what? Adi mentally. Misery of the. Huh? Misery of the. Mind. Body. Body and, and mind. Body and mind, right? Mind. Give some example. Do you ever have any Adi Atmika Kleshas? Disease, COVID. COVID, okay, yeah. <laughs> and anything else? Headache, fever. Headache, fever, okay, yeah, all right, you got it. Okay, adibotic. What's adibotic? Other, other living entity. Other living entity. Right. Give some other examples besides the terrorists. Yeah, terrorists. Insect virus. Mosquitoes. No, Mosquitoes, okay. Right. Yeah, okay. And then Adi Daivik. Meaning? Nature. 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 So, so we've got Duratma there on the bottom left, but we may get, we may be fortunate, right? You know this, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lada Beach, what's happening? That is a Brahman of Pumitikuna Bhaktivanji, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lada Beach. Somebody tell me what's happening, speak English. Means uh, after uh, roaming around in different planetary system or not Brahma, one might be very fortunate soul, get the mercy of Guru, and from Guru's mercy get the Krishna, and then they get the bhakti. How does a Guru give the mercy? What does he give? Guru, Guru gives the connection to connect with Krishna. How does he do it? Describe it as described in the verse. It says bhakti lata beach. He gives the seed of devotion, right? The spirit. Okay, okay. The spiritual teacher gives the seed of devotion. He plants the seed of bhakti in the heart, right? And then we start practicing Krishna consciousness, right? We become. And the result you can see on the top here, 
six urges controlled by Krishna consciousness. When we control the urges, remember the six urges? The urge, the speech, the mind's demands, actions of anger, urges of the tongue and the belly and the genitals. And then we avoid the unfavorable activities and attitude. We avoid these things. Right? And then the result, instead we accept the six favorable activities. Remember the six favorable activities? Who knows? Six favorable activities and attitudes. The first three are attitudes, the next three are activities. Remember? Enthusiasm, confidence, yes. patience. Yes. And acting according to regulative principles. Yes. Then, uh, uh, Sangatyaga means uh, give up a bad association. Mm -hmm. And one more? Yama and, yama and Niyama. Four regulative principles and uh, Niyama, chanting. No, no, you forgot one. Sato, uh, Satovrite. Satovrite, yes, following the footsteps of uh, uh, Acharya. Right. Acharya. Oh, okay, thank you. So, six act, these activities are accepted, and the result is you cultivate the sat, sattva guna, right? Come to the mode of goodness. And when you come to the mode of goodness, then you can become a Mahatma. Can you see at the top? Top right, Mahatma. So that's the idea. You cultivate Krishna consciousness, you follow the favorable activities, you'll become a great a great soul. Mahatma means a great soul, right? Mahatmanas Tamamparta. Someone chant? Mariji? Mahatma Nastu Mamparta, Daivim Prakruti Mashrita, Vajanti Ananya Manaso, Nyatva Bhuta Dimavyayam. Do you know the translation? Not exactly, Marriage. No? Okay, read. O Sanna Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Right. Ananya Manaso, right? Undeviated. They're, they're fixed in devotional service, fully engaged. So they're Mahatmas. So, Daivi Prakriti Mashrita, they've got the shelter of Krishna's energy, divine energy. They're protected. 9, 13. Right? So, uh, what <laughs> we put in the Bhagavad Gita verse, night for all beings, time of awakening for the self-controlled. That's for the devotees. And at the bottom, time of awakening for all beings, night for the introspective sage. Right? The opposite. Mm. Prabhupada explains. Someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, Sattva Guna, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami and then everything concerning how to make future progress to be revealed. Yes. So again, you can see the importance, cultivating the mode of goodness. Rupa Goswami's instructions are helping us to cultivate the mode of goodness. And then from the mode of goodness, everything will be revealed. So, Adyahara. What does Adyahara mean? Eating more than required. Or? And collecting, and collecting more funds more than required. Do you have that problem? You have too much money? <laughs> Eating too much, I have money. <laughs> uh, we never have enough, right? 
Read. Someone can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Avoiding Atyahara, religion entails understanding the laws of God because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of Atyahara or an obsessive desire for such Okay. People accept religion for material prosperity because of atyahara. Right? They're thinking the purpose of religion is for, you know, just like we say dharma, artha, kama, like that, you know? They're thinking religion is, we go to God, we pray, give me money, give me, you know, nice home, give me everything. We want economic development and we want, so we want artha and from artha we simply want karma, sense gratification. We never think about mukti. <laughs> and dharma is also then forgotten gradually. When you get the artha, then you forget about dharma. So, we ask you, how are devotees affected by achahara? How may we be affected by Ajahara? What could happen? What could you do? Hare Krishna. Uh, Atyahara, first it can uh, lead to the laziness in our uh, uh, activities and uh, that reflects into our behavior later on. When we over and over and we collect uh, more money and all that, then uh, 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 because of that more money, we get more ego. And uh, then we drift away from our uh, mission of uh, uh, services to Krishna. I, if we don't uh, stay with uh, Krishna, uh, Sadhu Sangha. Okay. So Krishna keeps us poor. So he doesn't want us to go away, right? <laughs> doesn't give us a lot of money. Okay, so devotees can, sometimes we get, we, we start collecting. You have so many bead, bead bags and beads and hardly we change. <laughs> People have so many nice sets of bat japa mala and nice bead bags, but they forget to chant. They have many books. You go to their home, they have so many books. And you take a book off the shelf, it's still in the plastic. They never, took, they never even opened the book. They just keep the books there. They never read them. So these are some things they get affected by Achihara. One, one car is not enough, one car is not enough, we have to have, a, have to have one car for the city and another car to go outside the city. Or, or some people have, a, they have the car for the weekend and they go on the motorbike during the week because the motorbike doesn't get stuck in the traffic jam like the car. So they have the motorbike or the motorcycle for the going to work and they have the car when they want to go out on the weekend and at night. Like that, we have so many things. Unnecessary. So try to keep, minimize, try to minimize our needs. Living simply, naturally. You know, just like clothing. People have lots of clothes. I went, I was in one, I went to one devotee's house and my goodness, I thought, I thought, I went in this one room, I thought it was a shoe shop. She had so many, so many pairs of shoes. I'd never seen so many shoes, one person. <laughs> so, of course, ladies, you know, they like to dress, they're very particular how they dress and different clothes. They have different shoes and bags to go with it. Ajahara, 
right? Great thing of luck. Nowadays, this, this is the problem. We've got, there, a, a, there's enough for everyone's need, not enough for our greed. We want so much more. All right, Ajahara. I don't know what that sound is. Somebody's keeping doing something there. I don't know what the noise. It's always coming through. If you, maybe turn your mic off. Everyone is on mute, only marriage. Okay. So you read the verse. Avoiding Atyahara. Anasatasya Vishayan. Yatarham Upayun Jataha. Nir Bandaha Krishna Sampande. Yuktam Bairakya Mochade. When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. Okay. So this is good. This is how it should be. Accept everything in relation to Krishna. Nirbandha Krishna. Yukta Vairagya. Right? There's different kinds of Vairagya. So this is Yukta Vairagya. This is what we practice. Yukta Vairagya means what? Accepting what is necessary only when it is related to Krishna. Yeah, Vairagya, what's the meaning of Vairagya? Renunciation. Okay, so Yukta Vairagya means renunciation in relation to Krishna. Krishna. Right? Yukta, there's Falgu Vairagya. Yeah, False renunciation. And there's uh, different kinds of vairagya, right? What's it? Mas masana vairagya. The renunciation at the crematorium. Smasana vairagya. We go to the funeral. When we go to the crematorium, oh, the yeah, material world, what a place. Oh, this life is miserable, no meaning, everything. We're very miserable, depressed. And then the, the next day, oh, party, oh, okay. We go off and enjoy. <laughs> and so the, that kind of renunciation doesn't last very long. Mm. But yukta vairagya is renunciation in relation to Krishna, using what is necessary for Krishna's service. Read. A Brahmana who is satisfied with whatever is prov providentially obtained is increasingly enlightened with spiritual power, but the spiritual potency of a dissatisfied Brahmana decreases as fire diminishes in potency and water is sprinkled upon it. In other words, we have to learn to be satisfied with what is given to us by the grace of providence. What is obtained honestly, we should be satisfied with that. Don't always try to get more, more, more. Going ahead. Someone read? Let's have a, a man read now. Four kinds of Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Kinds of blasphemy. To a Vaishnava. To blaspheme a Vaishnava for his or her apparent low birth or caste. To blaspheme a Vaishnava for previous sinful activities prior to surrender to Lord Krishna. To blaspheme a Vaishnava for some unpremeditated accidental fall down. To blaspheme a Vaishnava for the last traces of his or her previous sins or faults that are almost rectified. Okay, so four different kinds of blasphemy. This is what happens when we talk about people, you see. This is the danger. When we talk, Prajalpa, 
then we commit these kind of offences. We blaspheme, we talk about someone, oh, about this birth or about what they did before they surrendered and these things, and we commit offences. So this is blasphemy. The Vaishnava Aparad, Vaishnava Aparad, the first offence in chanting the holy name. It's a mad elephant offence, very dangerous for a devotional creeper. So therefore, don't talk prajalpa. All right, we're going to speak now about Niyama Graha. Right? Niya, Niyam. Niyam meaning the, the rules and the regulations. Rules and regulations. And then you have Agraha and Agraha. Too much attachment to the rules or too much neglect of the rules. So, how did Prabhupada adjust these things? Anybody know? Can give some examples about how Prabhupada was adjusting the rules and regulations? I think you must have studied this before, in Nectar of Devotion, right? You've already studied Nectar of Devotion. You studied about details and principles. Here we're talking about Niyama Agraha, Niyama Agraha, Niyama Agraha. It's the same thing. Too much attachment or being too much neglectful of the rules and regulations. So, how did Prabhupada adjust these things? What are some of the things Prabhupada did to adjust? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaji. Uh -huh. Prabhupada was saying that principle should be there, but you should uh, minimize the details. The, you should stick to principles, but you can little minimize the details. You can change the, adjust the details. You yes, can, yes. You can adjust the details. So yes, give, give me some example. Like uh, 16 rounds we have to chant, but you can do 17 also, 18 also, no problem. <laughs> but minimum we have to do 16. <laughs> How many did, did Prabhupada's Guru Maharaj say to chant? 64. Yes, yeah, 64 rounds, right? If you didn't chant 64 rounds, then you were considered what? Uh, you were considered fallen, patita, right? Okay. You're considered fallen if you didn't chant 64 rounds. Why six? Why sixty-four rounds? How many holy names are in sixty-four rounds? Sixty-four qualities of Krishna. No. Why we chant sixty-four? Why is it sixty-four rounds? How many holy names are in sixty-four rounds? One lakh. One lakh. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, one lakh. Haridas Thakur was chanting three like names. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he asked everyone chant one like names, means 64 rounds. But Prabhupada adjusted that, right? On what condition? Maharaji. Why did, why did Prabhupada adjust it? Because uh, in the age of Kali, the people may lazy and uh, less intelligent so, and uh, they don't want to do 64 and they don't want to join this pro uh, mission also. So that's why Prabhupada adjusted the, till 16 rounds. Well, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was also in Kali Yuga. It was also Kali Yuga. Prabhupada is more merciful. <laughs> yeah, and Prabhupada said, you must chant at least 16 rounds and engage in Krishna's service. The rest of the time, keep yourself busy in Krishna's service. Right? So that's one way Prabhupada adjusted. Any other ways? Any other example? Prabhupada adjusted. What did he do? Hare 
Krishna Maharaj. This uh, in the like uh, grahasthas are there, more more are there. They have to work and they have to do the practice. That's why they adjusted to sixteen rounds. Yeah, but I want other examples about how Maharaj, what other adjustments Prabhupada made. Maharaj, yes? uh, before Prabhupada, no woman given initiation. Really? I don't know about that. I've never heard this before. Certainly women were initiated, but they didn't have the Brahmacharini ashram. They didn't have women living in the temple. But they could be yes. initiated. Right? But Prabhupada allowed that women could be also full-time devotees. Yes, Maharaj. Right? Prabhupada allowed women also to go out for preaching. And the women do a lot of service, we know. Yeah, you know, you see also in India, they don't let women go on the altar to do the puja, to do arti. But in the West, other countries, you see the women do it, they do the puja. But pra Prabhupada allowed this, gave, let women do these things. Okay? So Brahmacharini Ashram, something, anything else? Yes. Yeah, uh, Prabhupada encouraged uh, this uh, uh, Vivaha Samskara, means uh, he, has, he attended, uh, he himself uh, uh, done the Vivaha Samskara to so many devotees. Yeah, very good Actually, Prabhu. Yes, very nice, that's right. Prabhupada, uh, sometimes he would get the couples married and sometimes there was nobody else there to do the yagya. Prabhupada would do it himself. Although he's a sannyasi, and sannyasis usually don't take part in these ceremonies, because sannyasi is like a, you know, he's not connected with the social things. But Prabhupada would do it for his disciples. He would arrange it, and he would do the, sometimes he'd have to do the Vivaha Yagya himself. And special, a sannyasi doing that because nobody else was there to do it, so he would do it for them. Yes, good. Anything else? Maharaj Prabhupada initiated on the basis of their gunas, not by their caste. Well, so did Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. That's, that's, that's standard. Rupa Goswami taught that. Okay, let's... But Prabhupada initiated a lot of foreign devotees, Maharaj. So, how did he do that? He had to cross the ocean, right? He went out yes, of Maharaj. India. Yes. Usually yes. sannyasi is not supposed to cross the ocean. But Prabhupada went. He went across the ocean. Oh. This, this, this is, you see, not, look at the heading here, breaking a lesser rule for a higher rule, right? A lesser rule for a higher rule. There's a pastime in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The pastime is about Lord Chaitanya's servant, Govinda. He wanted to give Lord Chaitanya a massage. Right? And Lord Chaitanya had taken prasadam and he was laying in the doorway. So Govinda came to give him a massage and he asked Lord Chaitanya, can you move so I can come in? Because the doorway was small and Lord Chaitanya was blocking the doorway. So Lord Chaitanya said, no, I can't move. And so Govinda said, no, I have to give you a massage. So he said, oh well, give me, but if you want to give me, give me, if you don't. He said, I'm not moving. So Govinda stepped over Lord Chaitanya and gave him massage. 
And then after he finished the massage, Lord Chaitanya, you know, he took, there was a good massage, Lord Chaitanya fell asleep. And he, did, he woke up after some time and he saw Govinda was still sitting there. So he said to Govinda, why, why are you still sitting here? He said, well, I didn't want to step over you. But Lord Chaitanya said, well, you stepped over me to come in. Why didn't you step over me to go out? And Govinda says, no, I, said, I, I stepped over you to come in so I could do service. But if I step over you to go out, that's not, not for service, that's going away from service. So I, I didn't want to step over you, I didn't want to commit the offence of stepping over you just to go away. I step over you for service. That's, so this is transgressing the lesser rule for the higher rule. The lesser rule was stepping over someone, but the higher rule to give service. Right? So Prabhupada could adjust these things. So mentioned here, from the character of Govinda to be learned, we may sometimes commit offences for the service of the Lord, but not for sense gratification. It's from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjalila, chapter 10. Hmm. So Prabhupada was very expert in adjusting principles. Oh, let me see. Oh, here's a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam. Someone can read? All the great Acharyas or religious preachers are reformers of the world executed their mission by adjustment of religious principles in terms of time and place. There are different climates and situations in different parts of the world. And if one has to discharge his duties to preach the message of Lord, he must be expert in adjusting things in terms of the time and place. Bhagavatam 1.9.9 per So, Some... Brahmachari is strictly prohibited to see even one young woman. But what can be done? In the western countries, the boys and girls, they mix very freely. And if I say, my dear boys, you cannot see even a young girl, then finished. My business there is finished. Therefore, I have to arrange according to the country, according to the circumstances, as far as possible. So gradually they are coming to the perfectional stage. Hare Krishna. Can you explain this to me? What is Prabhupada saying when he says, my business finished? Prabhupada has gone with a business or a mission to propagate the holy name of Lord Krishna. And so he wants to bring people under the umbrella of Krishna Consciousness. So to uh, do the Krishna Consciousness thing, people have to come and stay with him, understand, learn the, learn about Krishna. But if we say, I am going to do the Niyama, niyama Graha, that uh, boys and girls cannot stay together, then he cannot do anything. Like uh, the initial devotees, I was one, one example, when the initial devotees, there were one Mataji and Prabhu, they were living together. They, when the first initiation was given, then uh, they told, now uh, we are not married. So Prabhupada said, then you cannot uh, stay together. So they told, then what is the solution? Then Prabhupada said, okay, you get married. Then as a husband and wife, you can have Krishna conscious life. And you can, uh, you can live your life according to the rules and regulation of our Vaishnavism. Okay. Thank you. So Prabhupada said, in, you know, if he had to say that you have to, you cannot see a woman, that no man would join. That's the point, right? Prabhupada said, my business would, he said, nobody would be interested, nobody would want to become a devotee. If he said, you cannot see any women, there's men and women mix so much. So we have to adopt. Desh Kalapatra, according to time, according to, but we are keeping our principles as it is. 
but making arrangement according to the circumstances. That is required. Right? So that's adjusting the principles. Someone read? A preacher must strictly follow the rules and regulations laid down in the Shastras, yet at the same time devise a means by which the preaching work to reclaim the fallen may go on with full force. So, at the bottom, what was Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles in relation to Niyamagraha? Did Prabhupada adjust things? Yes. Yes. Did he maintain the principles? Yes. What principles did he maintain? Service of, to the Lord. Okay. Service to the Guru, following the instruction of Guru. What were the instructions? Go west and preach. Translate the books, scriptures in English, if you are good in English. Publish the books, publish the books and publish the scriptures. Yeah, anything else? Maintain principles. What principles do we follow? Four regulative principles. Yeah, maintain the four regulative principles. What about chanting? and yeah. chanting. Deity worship, right? What adjustments? Yeah. We'll, sh we'll show you now what adjustments Prabhupada make. First of all, cross the ocean. Sannyasi is not supposed to do. Second one, allow women to live as brahmacharini in the temple. The, before they get married, preparation for their marriage, you know, usually we get the women married. The, but before marriage, they live in the temple as the brahmacharinis, they do service in the temple. And they go for preaching, book distribution. Prabhupada did the Vivaha Yagya, you said that, yeah, right? He accepted the Guru Puja in front of the deities. That's not supposed to be done. And he sent devotees on book distribution and they could wear karmi clothes, they could wear civilian dress, you know, shirt and pants, not dhoti. Because they explained to Prabhupada, you know, that people see us in dhotis and like that, they don't like to talk to us. As if we go in civilian dress, it's easier for us to meet them and give them the book. So Prabhupada said, okay, but be smart, wear nice clothes, don't be, you know, dirty in, in your jeans. Look presentable. And Prabhupada took the title also, Prabhupada, his god brothers, they didn't like it. What principles did Prabhupada maintain? If you ever get money, print books. Don't use money for sense gratification. Regulative principles, right? Then only devotees who are serious about spiritual advancement should be allowed to stay in our temple. Not lazy or crazy people. Sometimes in the West, you know, you get people they come, they're lazy or they're crazy. So Prabhupada, the temple is for people who are serious. And people should accept the Guru, they should be initiated. All right. Yes, Prabhupada has accepted, break one more thing, which is not in the list. Earlier, Sanyasi not used to wear a stitch cloth. Prabhupada has done that. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also did that. Did he do that? Yes. We'll go ahead. Somebody read Srimad, read this quote from Srimad Bhagavatam. Nimagraha, Prabhupada's moves in adjusting details of maintaining principles. If someone does go and preach, 
taking all risk and allowing all considerations of time and place, it might be that there are changes in the manner of worship. But that is not all faulty, according to Shastra. Simad Vibhava Acharya, an Acharya in the discrete succession of Brahmacharya Sampradaya, has remarked in his commentary that Tandavas, or conditioned souls, who are born in lower and Sudra families can be initiated according to circumstances. The formalities may be slightly changed here and, and there to make them Vaishnavas. Okay, that's from Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto. So one meaning of Niyamagraha, to follow the rules and regulations fanatically without understanding the purpose of the rules and regulations, right? The purpose of the rules and regulations is to develop Krishna consciousness. To develop a love for Krishna, right? Here you can see what is the purpose. And there's a nice quote from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, describing about developing love for Krishna. Right? Okay, that's not in the purport. Not very important. Now, what about Prabhupada accepting Guru Puja in front of the deities? Here's a quote by a very senior devotee, disciple of Srila Prabhupada, Giri Swami. Someone like to read this for us? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada used to accept Guru Puja in front of the deities and one disciple asked him about this and Srila Prabhupada replied, Our goal is to develop love for Krishna and that is more important than the little rules and regulations. In other words, Srila Prabhupada thought that if Guru Puja could help us to develop love for Krishna more than following the rule to not worship someone in the temple, it means that some principles are more important and some rules are less important. The Acharya or the advanced devotee can guide us to understand the proper perspective. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Very nice explanation, you see. Some rules are more important than others. So Prabhupada was saying, you know, our goal is to develop love for Krishna. That's more important than just some rule, regulation. All right, then we spoke, we should not associate with non-devotees. Who are these non-devotees? Those who have no devotion for the Lord. Number one, Mayavadis. It's a lot of people. Many people have the Mayavadi philosophy. But the people who are really Mayavadi, your big Mayavadi followers, so we don't associate, and then pretenders, atheists, one who does not believe in Krishna. So these are the people to avoid. Don't associate. Here's a quote, why we should not associate, from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Somebody read? better to accept the miseries of being engaged within bars and surrounded by burning flames than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. Such association is a very great hardship. Chaitanya Charitam Madhya Lila 22.91. Very great hardship <laughs> to associate. Jana Sangha means what? Association of devotees? Non devotees. Yeah, worldly people, right? Jana Sangha. So, who are these people? Here's a verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. It said, E Vaishnavacha, Stri Sangha, Eka Sadhu, Krishna Bhakti R. Asat Sangha Tyag, E Vaishnava Achar, Stri Sangha Eka Sadhu, Krishna Bhakti Ar. Lord Chaitanya was asked, how to recognize a devotee? Lord Chaitanya quoted this verse. Asat Sangha Tyag, 
uh, you recognize a devotee because he gives up the association of materialistic people. Association with men too much affected by the opposite sex, by the women, or people who are illicit association with women outside of marriage, don't associate with these kind of people. Association with one's wife, not according to religious principles, that's also not good, not religious. So, we want, you can reflect on the attitudes and behavior advocated in the nectar of instruction. <laughs> Where do you need to improve? How do you think you can best do it? Give feedback. How are you doing on the attitudes? Are you, are you, good? Uh, are you guilty of Adyahara? Or are you, what about Jana Sangha? Do you have a lot of uh, association with people who are not devotees? These are the things, different things which we could discuss. If we had a classroom, it would be easier. You could share. Any comments from anybody? Maharaj, one question. Yes. Uh, who is devotee? To whom we should call a devotee? Well, you just see that verse. You see here, Lord Chaitanya was asked the, that question. Who is that? How do I know who is a devotee? So Lord Chaitanya quoted this. He said this. Asat sangatyag e Vaishnav achar. The, the, a devotee is one who gives up the association of the asat. Asat means the material. He doesn't associate with materialistic people. And here we define, what do you mean materialistic people? People who are very much attached to the opposite sex. Men too much attached to women or uh, associate with women outside of marriage in an illicit manner. So these are people who are, uh, one, one who is a devotee, he won't associate with these kind of people. Lord Chaitanya said, this is how you recognize who is a devotee. Understand? Yes, Maharaj, but little confusion. So, uh, it's for me only. I. I am not suitable for devotee category maybe because we have association with uh, uh, non-devotees people also but uh, for uh, preaching purpose not for the like going out and all. Well for preaching purpose that's allowed, that's allowed, that's good for preaching purposes of course we have to go and that's giving mercy, that's, comp that's uh, Lord Chaitanya is not stop talking about that. Of course, if we go and try to give Krishna conscience, but we don't take associate, we don't go and associate with people just, you know, oh, how was your, how was this and how was that? You know, we talk about Krishna, we try to awaken Krishna consciousness in them. Okay, but, then means with non-devotees we can have a chat like with with Krishna topic, on Krishna topics. Yes, definitely. Yes. Oh, definitely. Okay, thank you Maharaj. Any other questions? Anybody? Has there any other questions? Uh, one more question Maharaj. Uh, the non-devotees, like my family in, back in India, some people are like extended relatives, extended relatives like uncle and aunts, they are not devotees. And uh, in uh, altar, home altar, we have lots of gods with small uh, uh, laddu gopal also. So they offer, they make without onion garlic bhoga and they offer uh, at uh, altar, main altar, but they don't think about Krishna. So is it allowed or like not allowed? 
they offer they offer how do they offer not directly not directly to krishna they offer just like uh, how normally we offer they make cross at the ground they play put the plate and three times water around that and they don't chant any prayers no oh. yeah you have to teach them how to chant some prayers when they offer the food we don't just put the food there in front of krishna and leave him to eat you have to ask krishna to eat you have to uh, yes. recite the prayers because the the mantras the prayers which we chant that's calling krishna to come and take the food Hmm. So, uh, yes. uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, in this class, I have seen practically some people that do not know, like offering mantra, what you are doing in offering mantra, but they are they are chanting Hare Krishna Maha mantra only and put the plate of uh, bhoga to in front of that and they are chanting Hare Krishna Maha mantra. As you know, Hare Krishna Maha mantra above everything. In that condition. If it is offered to, uh, as Mataji said, that is practically also I'm, we are seeing it when, especially we go in outside program. I'm not. I'm talking here. I'm talking back home. So in that condition, can it be taken? Because Krishna is also there. Other demigods also there. It's a mix up, and they are chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. They are offering to Lord, and they are bringing it. Yeah, but they are offering directly to the Lord. You see, when we offer, we offer to Guru. We go through the Guru. We don't try to go directly to to the Lord. You see, you have to offer the food to the guru. Then the guru will offer to to Krishna. Like from the guru, it will go through the parampara and will go to Krishna. You have to approach Krishna in the correct manner. We don't just directly go to Krishna. So that's the difference. You see, people are just chanting Hari Krishna, but we offer to the guru. And then Guru will offer to his Guru, it will go to Krishna through the parampara. That's the process. We don't try to go directly to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya teaches us to approach Krishna, the servant of the servant, of the servant like that. We don't just go directly to Krishna on our own. So it's... Honest, I have experience in the cross. Because if I suppose, for example, if I go to uh, uh, in Bangladesh, they are all initiated devotees temple. They are very strict. If food is not cooked by a devotee and through the power distribution is not offered to Krishna, they don't eat even. But some other places I have seen. Okay, if somebody is a vegetarian, they cook in a fresh vessels. They offer, and anyway they offer to Krishna. They give it to them. They eat. So in both experience I have. Yes. I know there's different standards. Some people are more serious than others. So, you have to know for you. You know, we, we know that not everybody's the same. There are different people, different people at different standards. So you have to decide for yourself what standard you're going to accept. And at the beginning of the class, as Your Holiness uh, said. Um, that uh, sorry, uh, anything offered to a demigod as a as a pure Vaishnava should not be taken. But in that also cases, I have we have seen and even practically we are doing also. We go to vegetarian restaurant uh, like Govindas and all, where is uh, uh, people are not initiated, not even practice devotional practice. But we go and eat Govindas in Iskon Bahrain. Means in Bahrain we have a Govindas. They are the, the, the who are cooking. They are not initiated. Even some of the people who are even serving, they are not even in, in our uh, even Sanatana Dharma, but still we are taking it. So as you said in your class, uh, at the beginning, that uh, uh, we should take, we should not take uh, demigods prasad. So in one hand we are going outside, we are taking that from Govinda's food, and other side, can we say no to demigods prasad? Well, you see, this is up to the individual what standard he's going to follow. You see? I wouldn't like to take it. I wouldn't like to go there. And Prabhupada didn't like us eat in restaurants. So if you if the restaurant is not devotees cooking, you don't really want to eat there. Not not very good. Not good. They're not devotees. Why you want to eat their cooking? No. 
in it, that case in that case is this baby goat prashadam is not better than this uh, uh, kinds of uh, non devotees uh, cooked that both food? that both not good i'm not going to both see one bo bo i'm not going to see one's better than the other but they're both no good they're both not accept neither are acceptable Yeah, we want to, if you want to purify the people, if you want people to benefit, you have to have quality prasadam. Quality prasadam means you have to have qualified cooks. Qualification means devotee, initiated. That should be twice initiated. Brahman. That's the real qualification for the cook. And they have to follow strictly. If the cook and the pujari are not following strictly, then you don't get good quality prasadam. And if you want good quality prasadam, good quality prasadam can make a lot of devotees. It can help a lot of people to come to Krishna consciousness. But if you're just maintaining the restaurant, you just run a restaurant, you're just doing some business, you're just making some money for the temple, that's a different thing. You may call it Govindas, but you know, it's not really prasadam, definitely, if people are not devotees. But still, you're doing some business, you make some money, it helps to support the temple. Like, maybe it's a, the thinking is like that. Certainly, it's not, a, not for the spiritual purification, people are not going to... Uh, you could say, well, it's vegetarian. Yeah, it's vegetarian. Vegetarian, that's not prasadam. Better than non-veg, but it's not prasadam. It's not easy to run a restaurant. We know there are many challenges. It's difficult to get people, difficult to get devotee people to come and work in the restaurants and things. The, you know, we appreciate the difficulties. At least some things people are trying, you know. The, the, they made the restaurant, they call it Govindas, that's good. People use the name Govindas, they call Krishna's name. And, the, and it's vegetarian food anyway. So some, something there, you know, it's not prasadam. For people like devotees, initiated devotees, you want to think twice about going there to eat. But for ordinary non-devotees, it's okay. All right. So, just to review what we covered, six favorable and six unfavorable activities or attitudes in text two and three with examples, analogies, quotes. It's all there in Prabhupada's purport. You go through it. The six favorable. Enthusiasm. Remember? Enthusiasm. Endeavoring in Krishna consciousness. With Krishna, en endeavoring for the, pl for the service of Krishna. In Endeavouring, how does it go? Enthusiasm. Endeavouring with the intelligence in Krishna consciousness. Thank you Prabhu, yes. Endeavouring with intelligence for Krishna consciousness. That is enthusiasm. Sometimes people will be very enthusiastic but not intelligent. They're very rash. They don't think carefully. So, use intelligence is important. Prabhupada qualifies it. Prabhupada saw devotees sometimes were very enthusiastic but not intelligent. So, he wanted us to be intelligent. Use the intelligence. So, favorable activities. Tata karma pravartana. Two phases. The niyam, the, the yama, that means four prohibitions, and the niyam. The things we have to do, chanting, hearing about Krishna, worshipping Krishna. And then, 
Sangatyaga, giving up the association of these people who are not devotees, and then Satovriti, following in the footsteps of the Acharyas. Means following the footsteps, chant Hare Krishna, practice Krishna consciousness. And then the, the, the uh, unfavorable things, Ajahara, overeating, collecting more than we need, Prayashas, over endeavoring, Prajalpa, nonsense talk, making offenses and blaspheming devotees, and then Niyamagraha, we spoke about that quite extensively. Janasangas, loyam, greedy for mundane things. Sometimes we think, oh, Krishna consciousness doesn't give me everything. I have to do some yoga, I have to do some jnana, I need this, I need that. We go different places, that kind of loyam, greed. And Prabhupada's mood in maintaining principles and in adjusting the details for preaching. Ladies' ashram and adjusting the number of rounds and, you know, many different adjustments Prabhupada made to help us to become Krishna conscious. And plans to apply points relevant for us, right? Plans. We're going to be more careful, won't buy any more new clothes, new saris. Already got 60 saris, already got many, many beads and bead bags and lots of books. I haven't read them, need to read them. Going to try to live more simply, keep it simple. Concluding quote from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. Someone like to read? If one fails to give up the six faults, then the power to understand that Krishna Bhakti bestows the highest good for all living entities will be lost. What are the six what are the six faults? Uttara, unnecessary unwanted access Savings for uh, collecting money. Collecting money? You yeah, know? means more than, more than uh, working hard means to I think, uh, get more money. Well, we shouldn't work hard? No, we should work hard only if it is necessary, if it is required, not access. Okay, so what else? The six faults. Yeah, acting according to the regulative principle. That's wrong? No, that should be. We should follow principles. I want to know what are the faults then? What's the fault? Unnecessary talking. Yes. Prajapa. That's idle talk, gossiping. Associating with non devotees. Okay. Yes. You've not learned this very well yet, have you? Yeah. Six faults. So preparation is not there. Huh? Okay. Last Friday, I, I could not attend the class, I was not aware. Last Friday class. Yeah, so I was not aware really, so no preparation. Alright, so you have to get prepared, you have to catch up. You're behind. Yes, yes I'm behind. Six faults. Achahara, Prayashas, Prajapa, Niyamagraha, Jana Sangas, Loyamcha. These are the six faults, right? Over in the, over eating and over collecting, more funds than required, over endeavoring, 
And then Prajapa uh, idle talk, Niyamagraha, following the rules and regulations, too, too much, too, with too much uh, emphasis on the rules and regulations, giving too, being too much attached to the rules and regulations, or acting independently and whimsically, not following the, the rules and regulations at all. So we have to have a balance there, and Prabhupada showed the balance. Niyamagraha, Jana Sangha, association with non-devotees, we should stop, and Loyam, being greedy, being greedy for things, like mystic powers, you want some mystic powers or something, you want, you think, you think, Everything is not here in Krishna consciousness, we have to go somewhere else to get it. So that's the problem. Another quote here. Read. If one strictly follows the advice given in Bharts 3 by Silo Rupa Goswami, one is sure to advance in devotional service. Nectar of instruction, text 3, page 34. So, what was the advice given in text number 3? Take number three, advice is, advice is given uh, that uh, utshaho, utshaho, then one should have that enthusiasm, then definitely, and with them, with patience. And, but Maharaj, I'm looking at the text, Come extend the reading out, because yeah. I was not prepared. All right. So, okay, enthusiasm, and, confidence, patience. Yes, and patience. All right. And, Patparma means doing devotional service according to the yeah, doing the activities in favor of devotion. All right. And, and then to, uh, and to maintain it. Then, then satsangha, satsangha means... Uh, okay, thank you. Speech. All right, thank you very much. Let's have somebody else read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. There should be no duplicity. Sato Vritte means Plain dealing, straight dealing. Bhagavad Gita, lecture 2.13 to 17, Los Angeles, November 29, 1968. Do you remember how we translated the Satovrite in the verse number three? Yeah, uh, like, uh, mm, not like, uh, the, it is like, uh, to always, um, uh, the good mode actually in terms of. Uh, no, no. Uh, what did, what was it? Yes, what was the Prabhupada? Following the footsteps of the English Acharyas. Right, following in the footsteps of the Acharyas. So here Prabhupada explains what that means. Plain dealing, straight dealing. Being honest and straightforward. That's Satovrite. A nice quote. <laughs> A nice way to understand Satovrite being straightforward in our dealings, Don't, not duplicitous, not cheating. Okay? Any other question? Anybody? All right, it's already 12 o'clock, we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank Hare Krishna Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yes. So we'll go on to text, next class, text number four. Next class, text number four. Please look over the text and prepare. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.